Cool. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 37th episode of the show Power Rangers Zeo, as well as the 192nd episode overall, titled Scent of a Weasel. We begin this episode with a French man screaming as models walk down the runway. What the hell is happening? Kat and Tanya are helping and Rocky is a model for some reason, walking straight into another model. This French man is named Mr. Stenchy. He starts screaming at Rocky and Kat tells him to calm down. Then we see a model that is getting security right now from Stone. Then we see a model who has a terrible frizz. I guess Bulk was undercover as her hairdresser? Then we see that Skull is in a full on skunk outfit for some reason, and he tries to say something on the runway as a promotion for the brand, and he hits a model over into a bottle of something that pops off, pouring its contents all over the model that we saw before. Also, according to everyone around her, it reeks. Sprocket sees this and he's glad he's not the only one that sucks. <laughs> Machina then has an idea and Louis Kaboom is just there saying how his rewiring is complete so now he's free from the remote control. In the power chamber, Billy, Tommy, and Adam are talking about how Billy found something that appears to be a meteor coming toward Earth. Then they get a transmission from Trey who says that they're all in great danger. Meanwhile, in the moon RV, Zed is driving humming to himself. I mean, I could watch this show for forever. They all scream at each other because Louis Kaboom got away and Zed says that he'll find a way to get him back. And Rito keeps asking if they're there yet. It's really funny to see Lord Zed, the emperor of evil, driving an RV. At the beach club, Jason tells Kat and Tanya how he really wants to be knuckle deep in Emily ASAP. So they just ask him, why don't you just ask her to the fashion show? Jason says no, but then they bring up that they need more models and Jason says no offense, but it seems more like a girl thing. Okay, Jason. I mean, let's never forget the time you spent an entire episode crying about your heterosexual life partner not being around anymore because he went to a cabin. Then Emily comes over talking about how cool it is that Rocky is a model in the fashion show now. Also, Louis Kaboom and Machina talk about how they're going to make everything smell. I guess. Skull then apologizes to the model and she says that she can't smell it anymore anyways. She also never pictured Skull to be like a bodyguard and she explains that she gets lonely even as a supermodel but Skull reassures her that she'll never be lonely in Angel Grove because he'll never be leaving her side. Yes, I mean please give Skull more to do. And then Bulk and Stone are on swings eating burritos when suddenly a weasel monster shows up farting all over them. Billy says that whatever is coming towards Earth is 25 stories high and 100 tons. That's great. Then the alarms go off and they find out about the monster and apparently his gas is a ray now. And the plan is so that the people of Earth won't want to talk to each other anymore because they're all smelly. This episode's plot is like real dumb. It's morphin' time. The six rangers show up and they jump down from a bridge taking on this monster whose name is apparently Stenchy. Also, why did they go with a weasel instead of a skunk? I don't usually think of weasels as like being smelly. Whatever, the six take on the monster and then Stenchy just fires his rank ray all over them. <laughs> The rangers then fight him off while coughing and everyone keeps complaining about the smell. I mean, we get it, guys. Billy then sees that this meteor is getting closer and he and Alpha are getting a little terrified. Then they get the message again from Trey and like, yeah, they're still in danger. Tommy and Jason then kick Stenchy away and then he leaves. The rangers retreat to the command center and when they show up, Alpha and Billy tell them that they smell bad. They tell them to not take off their helmets because they reek so badly. Then they see the object is getting closer and Tommy suggested the Super Zeozords, but Billy says, no, let me try to make contact. It doesn't work and now they have to brace for impact. Billy, you would have had time if they actually just went and stopped it. They then see that something landed. They then play all of Trey's message, which I didn't realize they were doing before. He says that since Pyramidus is damaged, here's a new thing called the Warrior Wheel that's helping them out. How are they in danger then? Oh, you mean that was just a stupid lie? Yeah. Stenchy has shown up at the beach club so the six leave. They arrive at the beach club fighting off the cogs and Stenchy and honestly it's nice to see them fight here. Then Jason tells Emily to get the monster's attention which seems like needless endangerment but okay. She does and Jason attacks him from behind. Then Louis Kaboom shows up with even more cogs. The rangers then just fire at Stenchy's tail to stop his scent thing from working. Then Orbis and Clank are there, which they may have been earlier, but I didn't notice. Whatever, they make Stenchy grow giant. The Rangers call out their Super Zero Zords, which land. They then get fired at by Stenchy, who is now using his stench to somehow vaporize entire buildings. Since when could he do that? Then Jason calls out the Warrior Wheel, which gets fired out of the cannon like the others, rolling around. Then it just turns into its humanoid form before it spins as a humanoid, knocking Stenchy's stink ray gas thing back at it. Then it just starts beating the crap out of Stenchy before the rangers decide now is a good time to finally form the Super Zeo Megazord. The rangers come together and then they just grab the warrior wheel and they bowl him like a bowling ball towards Stenchy and he just blows the monster up into nothingness. That was super lame. Of course in space, Louis Kaboom and Machina argue how that plan stunk. Then at the fashion show, Bulk tells Skull how the model doesn't smell anymore. 
Then she comes up talking to Stone about how Skull really helped her get rid of the smell. Skull comes in with a barrel of tomato juice, explaining he saw it because it was an old rerun of the Partridge family, I guess. Tanya and Kat then talk about how glad they are how the smell went away once Stenchy was defeated. Then Emily is there too, and they say that someone is there that she'll be excited to see. Obvious clue is obvious. The fashion show starts and the models start coming out in stupid clothes, and yeah, this isn't the content that came for Power Rangers. Like at all. We do see that Rocky comes out with a model from before, which I just realized we never got a name for. Also, Jason's modeling now too, and it's a nice little touch because he's in pretty much all red. Also, where the hell are Tommy and Adam? The model then walks out with Skull in the skunk outfit, and he says something about how this perfume is like awesome or whatever. The end. Not gonna lie, this episode was real rough. There's like no denying it. Like, I want to just like it based on like the campiness and weirdness all around, but like, nah, it's pretty bad. I get they had a monster they didn't really know how to use properly from the Japanese footage, and this is a creative enough idea to implement it, but I won't lie and say that it stuck the landing because, wow, did they not. I will say, though, it's another episode where we get to see Jason Narvi show again that he's actually a really, really good actor that is severely underutilized for dramatic scenes. Watching episodes like this actually bum me out because it makes me kind of hurt that they never made Skull into a Power Ranger somewhere along the line. Next time, we get a weird callback slash wrap-up to a storyline that literally everyone forgot about. But until then, may the power protect you.